Chapter 6, Poachers in the Woods Under General Toadstool's watchful eyes, Marth's expedition set out beyond the fairy ring under a rising sun. Their guides led them skillfully along mossy deer trails scenting the woodland floor, past sentinel oaks sheltering cloister glades still untouched by change. All was tranquil in dawn's light, birdsong and insect droning, weaving nature's lone music through bough and briar. Yet, as morning waned, the forest deepened, and unease fell upon the sprites. Strange scents lingered amid fallen leaves, hints of intrusion disrupting timeless rhythms known only to wild dwellers. Marth sensed it too, subtle signs of recent passage, bent ferns and scuffed bark showing another surreptitious tread distantly paralleling their course. Such marks should be absent in these remote reaches, unknown to any but hidden folk. Halting, he examined telltale traces with care. Footprints too large for any denizen of Greenwood or Glade, yet not any hunters from Flatop Village either. The imprints angled away purposefully into densely shadowed thickets, as though a concealed route was being trailed directly against forest law. Exchanging worried glances, the sprites motioned Marth to secrecy, leading onward stealthily along the disturbing trail. Rounding a moss, draped hawthorn, they came upon a grassy hollow once home to a magnificent fairy ring, but where towering fungi should stand sentinel, only scorched earth remained, concentric patterns raised utterly from the glade. Nearby, a hastily abandoned camp smoldered, and strewn amid ashes were gnarled fragments of Bullet, Chantarelle, and Amanita, pried unceremoniously from the ravaged ring. Horror and indignation filled the sprites at this sacrilege, this desecration of sacred fungal vestiges dwelling here since time out of mind. Marth examined remnants grimly. These were no chance woodcutters, but black market poachers plundering rare mushrooms to sell for profit indifferent to balance in green places. Worse, implications dawned as tracks departed purposefully northwest into remotest forest marches touching the buried heartwood itself. Gathering himself, Marth turned to the Guardian, return and inform the Queen at once. Good spirit. These lawless deeds spell ill for all dwelling in sun or shade. I shall follow these foul scents to their source if the forest permits, and send word if further aid is required, the sprite nodded solemnly and sped away soundlessly along winding paths. Alone now, in the ravaged glade, Marth fetched his pack and took up the poacher's cold trail. Their disregard for the woodland's secret ways spelled grave danger. Should their greed reach concealed veils below where mystical mycelial channels bore nutrition unseen? More was at stake now than these poachers knew, stirring him to hasten their intercept before darkness fell, upon all in green places exposed and hidden alike.